I'm gonna need a minute to process that one. Well guys, I just got back from my first sensory deprivation experience and I loved it. I can't wait to talk to you guys about it. Man, this weird egg-shaped futuristic pod is such a new device in my life for the exploration of my own consciousness and I can't wait to share how I used it for the first time with the rest of you in today's video. So let's just start from the beginning. I think you can probably tell I'm dripping with enthusiasm. Um, Two days ago, I spontaneously decided that I wanted to get butt naked in a strange room with a egg-shaped pod with a blue glow coming out of it, and I wanted to get in that. I wanted to get in that strange egg-shaped pod because I heard from Joe Rogan that the egg-shaped pod, it can do things for the mind. So I paid the people their exorbitant fee, like $65 for one hour. I paid them that fee, and... I just wanted to see if it was worth it because everybody talks about the float tank. Everybody talks about, man, you got to eat edibles in the float tank. Man, you got to smoke weed in the float tank. So, you know, I thought about that. I thought about, should I smoke weed in the float tank? Should I, you know, do mushrooms in the float tank for the first time? And I realized that's a really, really stupid idea. Really, really stupid. So I went for a baseline and I didn't do anything. So in today's video, you're going to hear my experience going in a float tank for the first time ever on nothing. Nothing except my brain juice. So let's get into it. So I think I'll just start off by talking about some of my first impressions getting into the room itself that has the, the isolation pod in it, because it's a bit strange. So you're led into a back room by what seems like a nice lady who escorts you to this decent, decently sized room. It's kind of like a personal locker room or a big personal bathroom that also has a white egg-shaped pod that is glowing blue inside of it. And... It's a bit freaky, I'm not going to lie, you know? If you were a conspiracy theorist, you would not be 100% certain that you were not going to wake up in 10,000 BC after shutting the lid behind you. But I took her word for it that this was not a time travel device, this was actually just an isolation tank, and I did what she said. So I'm living in the future, I hop in the shower, I'm butt naked, and I'm looking out at the blue, the blue sea in front of me. The blue ambiance. But I get in, and the water is fine, it's exactly skin temperature so you barely even feel it and it's very uh the word we would use in chemistry is viscous like it's very thick and it would be hard to stir and you stand up and you're kind of exposed so this is kind of like your last moment to the world before you seal yourself off in this thing you close the lid behind you and you kneel down and your space gets smaller and smaller and smaller until it's just you and this little uh kind of like a cozy coffin if you picture a cozy coffin it's you in a cozy coffin in this skin temperature water that you can hardly feel that you sink on top of and you let yourself lay back with the pod closed and I immediately did not want the light I did not want the light at all so within the first minute I on the on the right side of the tank there's a button you can press to just shut off the lights completely and right when you shut off the lights it's like you're in the womb again. It's probably exactly what it would feel like if you suddenly became sentient in the womb. The boundaries between your body and the water dissolve really quickly because a lot of our cues for where we are are based on temperature and contrast. They're based on contrast. And so when the water is no longer contrasting your body, it becomes a bit tricky to separate your body from the water. So in your mental projection of yourself, where you set your own borders is based on how you feel, but the outlines of how you feel are based on contrast between yourself and the environment. And so now that you no longer have any contrast between you and this, um, <laughs> this uh, strange dead sea you're on, you're floating on, now that you no longer can feel the difference between you and that, it's hard to distinguish yourself from anything other than like a a loose energy field and when you start to feel like a loose energy field things get really loosey-goosey things get very relaxed and they unwind and you feel sort of like a bliss form you feel like a, a letting go it's only it's like what I can imagine getting on the getting on the International Space Station to be like right you just you can just relax and that has a lot of value for me personally another thing you notice right when you get in the isolation tank is it's the presence of your own breathing and heartbeat. These are rhythms to our daily life that we certainly notice throughout our day, but we don't often come into contact with exclusively for one hour. So what I mean by that is all the other sounds are tuned out, and because your ears are just dipped below the surface of the water, you're hearing... <sighs> 
and you're hearing dud, 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 dud. All I heard guiding me through my experience the whole time was my heart beating and my breath. And your heart beating and your breath are two great areas of focus in any meditation practice. And so it's kind of like a free gift during the isolation tank experience because your mind can just begin to drift off. The next thing that I started to do after honing in on the rhythm of my breathing and my heart was experiment with different, almost like yoga-esque postures. One cool thing I didn't uh, expect from the isolation tank was all the different ways that you can lay. I mean, you could lay in a complete X or you could lay with your arms above your head or you could lay with them on your side. I experimented with all different types of laying and I found power in a lot of different poses. For example, laying like a giant X with your palms outward feels great, you know? I mean, I'm not much of a swimmer in pools, but it probably would feel pretty good in a pool too. But when you're in a medium that has no worries about floating whatsoever because you could just, you know, kind of go ragdoll mode, there's a ah, there's a looseness introduced to the experience and you can see in my face, I'm almost trying to like rekindle what the experience was like because it's so um, alleviating, you know? I mean, we live on a planet with a shit ton of gravity. <laughs> a shit ton of gravity. And I'm kind of just beaming because I got to escape gravity for a little bit. And I hope I get to do so again in the future. Let me just say that. A cool thing I noticed about my body once it was in conditions of lightness is that there's still an inner tension and resistance that we all seem to have, or, you know, I should just say at least I have, because even though I could completely surrender to the experience, in the very beginning, I still found myself fighting myself, which is strange. You know, you don't expect yourself having to uh, resist yourself when there's nothing left to resist. And so I guess that really does show that there's still, uh, there's a lot of inner tensions and clenching that we have that's completely unnecessary that if we got rid of probably would feel a lot better physically for us. One of the funny aspects about the isolation tank is still continuing to watch the mind and all of its amusements. For example, you will still notice your brain coming up with a whole list of reasons why you're bored right now, why this doesn't really need to happen, why this is so deep right now, um, or just uh, general anxiety, for for example. I remember at some point I started to get an anxiety about when does this end, you know? Um, am I going to be in a deep meditative state and all of a sudden a, a chime comes on or some type of iPhone alarm sound? So you started to get, I started to get some type of anticipatory anxiety about the end of the session. And I think other things can creep in. Like I, I can imagine people worrying like this, like, I should be relaxing right now, damn it. I just paid $65 for this experience and I should be relaxing right now. So how funny that one of the biggest traps to going to any type of spa or place to relax is that you set yourself up a time to relax and relaxation is often spontaneous when it happens naturally. So while the isolation tank is very, very useful for me and very relaxing and therapeutic. The mind still says things like, I could be doing better things right now. I could be, I could be doing X, X, X. So that was funny to watch. But in large part, I, I found myself not really having to resist the experience at all. It, it was more of like a having to tamper bliss. If anything, it felt like a nonstop bliss kind of just radiating out of my my chest. As time goes on in the isolation tank, I just become more and more comfortable letting myself go completely. And I expect that this will have totally different um, time barriers for different people. Some people might take a lot of sessions to even get comfortable at all. Some people might become comfortable right away. I probably found myself somewhere on the end of getting comfortable right away because I took to it. I really like the feeling of not having a physical body to carry around and to get to experiment with the idea of being simply a, a spacious consciousness that that is exactly that, a spacious consciousness. But another cool aspect is because, like I said earlier, you're feeling your own, you're hearing your own heartbeat so loudly and you're hearing your own breath so loud, it allows it to become the center of this universe. So while with eyes wide open, you're seeing absolutely nothing but the vast dark expanses of whatever your mind is filling, feeling your own heart and hearing your own heart and, and breath allows the experience to, um, to have a center really, to have a, a center that, a central heartbeat for the consciousness to explore through. Let's talk for a minute about psychedelics and isolation tanks. I have to do it. I simply have to take psychedelics eventually and go in an isolation tank because 
The experience of mushrooms is such a profound religious narrative that is so personalized to your own life that I can really only imagine the magnification that going in an isolation tank would give that. I could really only imagine because when you strip down all the distractions already, you're exposing the true core that is the self. And if you were to combine that with psilocybin, which also strips so many emotional and psychological filters in the same way that going in a sensory deprivation tank strips sensory filters, that, that synergy could be profound. I mean, somebody might, somebody might disappear from the pod completely. You know, I'm almost worried about doing mushrooms in the pod eventually because, you know, what if I end up meeting Australopithecus afarensis, you know, in, in a grassland somewhere. So I need to be cautious because the, the energy that could be created by somebody taking a psychedelic, who, who was that person act, who was that person actually that was supposedly talking to, talking to dolphins through isolation tanks and doing acid? I believe that guy now. I believe that guy now. And so this channel from now on is going to be me talking to dolphins and doing acid. So tell your friends, tell your family, Quentin's doing acid and he's talking to dolphins. That's what's happening. He went in the isolation tank and now he's convinced. Does the isolation tank give you any visuals or anything that's like a psychedelic? No, I wouldn't exactly say so. Um, I didn't really feel my state of my state of mind really change in the sense that I um, I dissociated or anything like that. I always knew in the back of my head where exactly I was, but it's almost like by removing a lot of the bullshit that we see in our daily life, um, I could sort of just be a little consciousness floating around a vat. I probably, I, I kind of imagine that's probably what it feels like to be a robo brain in Fallout. If you've ever played the video game Fallout, uh, being in an isolation tank is probably what it feels like to be that little brain in the glass. Another weird thing about being in an isolation tank is you kind of feel like a damn jellyfish. You kind of feel like, um, it's like any slight movement of your body, like a little, you know, twist in the hips kind of makes you, f you're floating on the surface of this thing so it can get a bit strange, you know. You feel a bit like a jellyfish just kind of susceptible to the tide in a way. Um, so you don't want to make too many movements because when you get perfectly still, it's the best. Getting perfectly still is ideal because if you don't get perfectly still, any little movement of your hip or whatever is kind of going to rock the boat a little bit. And, you know, rocking the boat kind of kills the vibes a little bit. You don't want to be hitting the sides of the tank, you know, left and right, you know, sounding like the Titanic. But alas, I had a great time in there, you guys, you know, I really had a great time in there. I loved it. I keep thinking about what a great tool for creativity this thing would be. I mean, you could just go in there and play out all types of scenarios in your head or uh, artistic ideas. You could play a full movie in your head, really, if you if you really got to thinking. Um, and that's something I really loved about the isolation tank. I love the duality between having the ability, if you'd like, to project your consciousness <laughs> into a expansive, uh, boundaryless universe, or to focus more closely on the sound of the breath and the heart and the physical functions. Or you can place your attention along the body, or maybe just what you perceive as the body, as you follow the loose feeling of an energy field from your hand all the way throughout your body. And this combined with these very, you know, yogic poses is really nice. I gotta be honest, it's really nice. So laying at some points with my arm above my head, with my neck fully reclined, just fully dipped back in that water. I probably almost got a little bit of salt water in my eyes. Felt divine, man. <laughs> it's uh, it's really nice to have something propping you up and being able to just, to just let it all go. And when you let it all go, you can, you're free to really be as you, as you, as you choose, honestly. I mean, if you were a very negative person, you're free to become lost in your own terror thought loops about all the ways that your life is horrible. If you're a blissful person and a happy person, you could spend a, an hour in complete radiance and love and light just coming from your fingertips and your chest and all of that. It's really a, it's really a how you make of it experience. Overall, throughout most of my experience in the isolation tank, I was in a state of what felt like deep presence. It felt like I was really in the moment, experiencing the moment for what it was, breath by breath, heartbeat by heartbeat, in utter relaxation. And I guess you can put a price on that. I was going to say you can't put a price on that, but uh, <laughs> I guess it's $65 for 60 minutes. And let me tell you, if I was Jeff Bezos, this would be my morning routine. Wake up. Isolation tank. 
As I spend an hour drifting around this pod like an ape that has become a loose spaghetti energy field, I hear the music. The music that means it's time to get my ass out because I need to make some more money. So I slowly transition myself into actually getting back out of this thing. And that was actually pretty strange. It was almost like a ritualistic experience. And I'm sure that this could be incorporated into a psychedelic ritual because so this very bass heavy music plays and I sit up slowly. I sit up in the dark and my eyes are wide open and I'm looking around and I see absolutely nothing. And so I'm sitting in this shallow water, a naked mahogany warrior, looking around and seeing nothing, just pure darkness. And then I open the pod lid. I open the pod lid and it's like, ah, I have been reborn. I have come out of the womb and I'm a new man. I stepped out of the, I stepped out of the tank, took a quick video for you guys and Wow, it was like I was a newborn. I was I was blinking my eyes. I was I needed a bottle and a nap. I'll tell you that. You need a bottle and a nap after your first sensory de deprivation tank experience. When I got out of that damn pod, I felt brand spanking new. I felt like a new man. I felt like someone just purchased me on the market for $333. That's not all that much, is it? But I felt like I was a valuable individual. I felt like I was floating roughly four to five inches off the ground and eventually only about two inches off the ground. But for the next several hours, I felt like I was floating. I felt, you know, when Naruto does the, I could have done three of those, maybe like three good ones, probably. So just know if you have any type of spiritual powers or your, your chakras are overloaded already, or you're too powerful of a spiritual person, don't go in an isolation tank because it kind of just recharges your spirit meter, your mana. Yeah, your mana. But enough rambling, enough hearing about my strange adventures in the egg-shaped device from the future. That was my sensory deprivation tank experience for the first time. I hope you enjoyed me sharing it with the rest of you. If you liked this video, please like it and subscribe or check out the rest of my videos. I really enjoyed making this video, and I'll see you guys next time.